Greetings sailors and welcome back to World of Warships and a look at Tokachi, which is a tier 7 Japanese Atlanta, kind of? It more or less is a variation on what Atlanta does, so I don't think it's entirely unfair to call it that. Now there was a request for this under the last video and it was one I was planning to look at anyway at some point, so it, it sort of reminded me that yes I haven't actually done a video on this yet, so we might as well take a look at it. So this is one I got from my whaling for the Kitakami when I bought all of those boxes and I still slightly wince at that memory uh, but I did get a bunch of premiums out of it including this one so uh, yeah it was about time I did actually get around to looking at it uh, and as far as the ship itself goes uh, it's, it's okay it's not amazing uh, it's got some nice qualities but it's also got some less than nice qualities and uh, if you don't get on with something like the Atlanta then you're probably not going to get on with this because uh, it's the same short range very squashy style of ship. There are like I said though some differences you've got a few thousand more hit points which is quite nice. The artillery reload your main battery is quite slow for a five inch gun I mean it's not out of place for a Japanese five inch gun but that is offset by the fact that you have a pretty decent fire chance for a small caliber gun plus uh, a couple of hundred more damage per shell on the the max damage figure so uh, that combined with Japanese ballistics being actually pretty decent um, yeah it's it, it's actually a reasonably hard hitter it's just the fact that it has that seven second reload does feel kind of nasty one of the big changes is the torpedoes you've only got uh, triple launchers one per side but they are fairly substantial uh you're 17 uh, 000 damage 77 knots and a fairly snappy 70 second reload you can stealth launch these but it's not a huge margin it's absolutely not a huge margin uh, the concealment is actually worse than Atlanta unfortunately it's about a kilometer worse 10.6 objectively quite good for a cruiser quite bad for a cruiser however that only has 13.6 firing range so yeah it, it does actually make it a little bit trickier to play um, it's also not super maneuverable it's it's fast but yeah that there uh, therefore then translates to having a uh, not particularly good turning radius what well, Atlanta has yeah over 100 meters better and Atlanta's not a particular slouch either this is both ships with the uh, Sierra Mike flag so that's not their base top speed but yeah I think Atlanta also roughly the same rudder shift so yeah seven seconds it's not awful but it'd be nice if it had something more like uh, four seconds five seconds something like that so uh, yeah it makes dodging incoming fire a little bit trickier and you're going to be dodging a lot of incoming fire when your maximum firing range is 13.6 so you know much like Atlanta find an island if you can only you don't have the American ballistics that allows you to sit quite so close behind islands lastly I'll mention the AA uh, it's not particularly great considering this is sort of a Japanese Atlanta but the Atlanta itself uh, you, they both heavily rely on flak and this actually has less um, closer range DPS so uh, yeah you will notice there it says 75% I've actually got on Captain Yamamoto the uh, focus fire training I think I had spec'd that for some other cruiser uh, fill the tubes might be quite useful for a captain that's more like focused on this ship or even demo expert which gives you an extra one percent fire chance so you actually bump that up even a little bit further so yeah this is just be using this captain because he's a 21 percent captain and he also does have a nice boost to the uh, grease the gears skill so uh the turret traverse is actually really snappy with that skill it's not quite as good without it but it puts it on a par with the uh, in fact it's even better than the atlanta with it without it I, th I think it might be like eight seconds ten seconds something like that uh, I can't I can't maths but uh, it's still pretty good without it it's just it's definitely not a necessary skill um, if I was respecking for this exact cruiser I would probably take some 
and different skills, but that's still not a bad set of stats. So let's take this into battle and see how we do. So we're top tier, which is nice, but what is nicer is that this is a map where I might actually get to use some amount of island cover. And uh, we'll see exactly how those ballistics fare. Uh, this is unfortunately the standard version of this map though, so that's not fantastic. Now I did mention consumables in the port, but you can see here you have Hydro, you've actually got a Torp Relay Booster, which does, obviously, um, like if you're in a situation where you need to do some more torpedo damage, that's obviously quite handy, and you've got a Fighter as well. So that's possibly a little more useful than having a, a defensive in place. So that's another difference from the Atlanta, of course. Atlanta does not get a catapult. So we'll see... Uh, what we run into first. There's a fairly even mix in this. Uh, it's basically four of everything, no CVs, no submarines to worry about. This does at least get uh, depth charge airstrikes rather than the uh, option of of uh, um, over the rail depth charges because uh, it's not fun to play a cruiser with those. It really does hamper you. Well, I've got no one spotted on this flank so far, but the T-22 might. Uh, once he's cleared, I'm actually going to put some torpedoes uh, out there. As you can see, the angles are pretty decent. They're not amazing, though. You do have to possibly expose yourself a bit more than you would want to uh, to get the torpedoes out. But it's certainly a lot, uh, a lot better than um, a lot of other... Japanese cruisers where from this tier onwards uh, you're basically having to turn round full broadside because you have a very restricted rear arc only so you at least have a full um, broadside arc going on here so no one to shoot at at the moment it's always an issue when you have a restricted range and uh, no way to boost it in the old days in ye olden days, <laughs> what was that voice? I don't know. You would have been able to take the uh, primarily destroyer, but you know, still useful on cruisers with small calibers skill that gave you extra uh, main battery range. Heck, if you go back far enough, that actually applied to light cruisers as well. That's why the Kutuzov. Has such a good range for its tier. They actually kept that extended range when they were making that captain skill change. Uh, unfortunately, some other ships didn't get to benefit, though. It was a long standing gripe of mine that when they uh, essentially took that skill away from cruisers with even small caliber guns, uh, the. Uh, the Krajny Krim did not get any compensation in terms of either its uh, reload or its uh, uh, main battery range at the time. I think it's had a better reload since then, but yeah. Right, we can just about... Um, oh. I just need to go backwards slightly. So, yeah, you can see the arcs here. Um, it's good enough. Like... Atlanta would be clearing this easily. And if it's a further away island you're shooting behind, then that's fine. But even just here, that one of the rear turrets is clipping that island. So it's yeah, it's not nearly as good as Atlanta in this kind of scenario. But you do have punchier guns and better torpedoes, so it's 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 sort of I really would consider this to be a variation on Atlanta. It's certainly a more efficient fire setter than Atlanta. Although my Atlanta I've got given IFHE. Uh, so it's got a slightly lower fire chance than it it might have. Or my Atlanta captain that I have in there. I think I've got actually a specialised Atlanta captain. Right, that Duke of York should eat a bunch of torpedoes. Although Duke of York does have... Uh, it does have... Hydro, of course. Okay, 
I'm hoping they're a bit distracted by everything that's going on that, yeah, it's safe to pull out here. Other people might choose to shoot at me, but I don't know if there's anyone that's really close enough. So yeah, avoiding it with presumably the Hydro, or maybe they just anticipated the attack, but they've, they've wandered into a bad neighbourhood. And been completely overwhelmed, so that's fine. Uh, apparently there's a destroyer down there, which is less good, but I kind of, I don't want to go out into open water. Stored 43, okay. This really is an island hugger, if at all possible. Uh, it's definitely, I, I mean, I, I guess, Given it's a lot less common than Atlanta, people are not necessarily going to know its characteristics that well. But if I was facing one of these in a destroyer versus an Atlanta, I'd be less scared of this overall. Just because of the lower rate of fire. Uh, of course the other variation we have is the flint, but that's much more... that much more plays around its smoke than anything else. Right, let's see if we can pop off. I think it's just the de grass that we'll have. Shots at me there. Nagato is in range, as is this Katsuki. We can just about get, but... Uh, no, okay, not anymore. We might... Try topping the Nagato. We'll see how that goes. But we kind of need the Akatsuki to die first. We're just sort of doing targets of opportunity at the moment. Just in terms of uh, concealment. IFHE might well be a useful skill on this ship, to be honest. You will lose some fire chance, of course. But having that extra pen. Right. Uh, oh, hello, Indracht. I really don't want to take fire from Nagato guns. Let's fire up Hydro. And actually, let's use the, uh, the reload booster. It's not quite instant, but it's not bad. It's a fairly quick one. Uh, we've also got the stored still somewhere to the south. But I would absolutely want this Nagato dealt with first. Because uh, Nagato guns can and will be very, very nasty. But we're currently stealthed, but stored or somebody. No, don't look at me, Nagato. Let's get into cover. Oh, no, it's fine. The torp's going to kill him. Right, that's fine. Uh, we've got Tiger on the other side. Don't know where that gear has gone. Well, there you are, okay. We've got Hydro for another 30 seconds. The fact that this is a standard game, I mean, on this map, it's always just so goddamn messy. Uh, we are capping their base, <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people rushing back, so this might end up being a very low damage finish to this game. I don't know. Standard games are always such an absolute mess. Right. There's the store. There's Gida. I really hope Gida put their torps out against someone else. You do have secondary guns, unlike the, uh... The, uh... Atlanta, of course. Right, there's some Gida torps.
one more minute before I can... Yes, Collingwood's getting pretty beat up. What an absolute mess of a game this is. Right. I... Oh, the Tiger's going the other way. Okay. Uh, Collingwood has unfortunately burned down. Got a Mutsu coming through the middle. Oh, that's unfortunate. It would have been nice to hit the stored with a torp. Yeah, Atlanta, it's a lot easier to correct for people dodging and whatever. Because you just have that much faster reload. But you can't really do it with this ship. It's a lot harder to hit destroyers at closer to your max range. So even though the shells hit harder, Yeah. It's just not as easy. That's possibly the Indirax targeting me right now. So I can set fire on that. Oh, everyone's dead. Okay, well, never mind. Everyone died very suddenly. Now just be in the Mutsu. Now let's help out the Mutsu with this tiger. Probably very little chance of hitting the stored at this range. Interact using AP shells. Well, that's Chetas and Hex. Uh, that's who's not lasting too much longer. I think if I was in something like a Boise, I'd probably be, or even the Atlanta, I'd be in a slightly more secure situation right now. But, uh, I think I'd just generally be screwed either way <laughs> with how this has worked out. There's only a couple of ships left, though. But. One of them is a Queen Elizabeth, who will utterly punch my face in. So, yeah, I can get the Indract. I possibly can get the Stored, but I guess we'll see. The chance of coming out of this is uh, incredibly remote. Especially when the Stored can just kind of keep me uh, lit up. For the Atlanta. The stored player is being reasonably oh that was a good hit, reasonably smart, but uh, I only need like one more hit maybe. I'm also running very low on health at this stage. Which is not so great. Right, Queen Elizabeth. I'll use the reload. I really do want to get that stalled out of the way before my hydro runs out. But suspect they're just running the heck away, which is what I would do. There's no way they've stuck around in their smoke. <laughs> That would be extremely foolish. Even if it was just the Degrasse, I wouldn't fancy my chances. Yeah, the fact that the stored can keep me just lit up for the Queen Elizabeth is a major disadvantage. Let's see if I can get some poor man spotting from the fighter. There we go. If I'll land sufficient hits on the Queen Elizabeth than maybe with the torpedoes. But I then have to live long enough and I've only got like 9k health left. Right, are you passing in front or behind the island? Or front of the island? And it really is just... Oh, sheer RNG at this point!
if I had any way of disengaging, but I don't because the sword is still alive. Right, second group of torps isn't going to hit. Um, unfortunately, there's enough of a gap in the first group of the torps that they all managed to... We'll see. The second group might actually still do something there. <laughs> yeah, this is this is pure Atlanta. I don't know. He might have the captain skill that gives you extra dodge. Oh, I don't want to have to turn here. But anyway. Yeah, he might have the, the captain skill that gives you extra warning for torps. Or even the uh, equipment that gives you extra warning for torps. They're not particularly stealthy. I think it's like 1.6 kilometer. I'm also very much running out of time at this stage. This is this is so much in the hands of oh, so much in the hands of RNG. <laughs> oh dear, there's still a de grass somewhere there as well. Right, Hydro's about to come back. This is turning out to be a far more hairy ending to this game than I had anticipated. Uh, we do still have a fire burning. Oh. In fact, it's, I think it's double fire, so we might actually take this Queen Elizabeth, you know. Oh, well, with this dying shot. I mean, there's only so much you could do that. It was entirely in the hands of RNG as to whether the shells were going to, you know, I was doing what I could. Uh, I'm going to say dissatisfied purely because it was a standard game. And I don't like standard games that much, but for goodness sake, anyway, that was still kind of interesting overall. Uh, I have no idea what health of de Grasse was. We know the stored was very low health, but there was very little chance of me chasing them down. So that was a bit more exciting than I thought it might be. Um, it gave you some idea of uh, how things uh, <laughs> can go in this. Only one torpedo hit, which is a bit disappointing. But... Uh, yeah, if, if, you know, if people have Hydro or they have anti-torpedo skills, then it does make it a lot harder to land those hits, especially as they can fan out so much. Rather worse matchmaking this time, and a carrier, and it's Super Beta, so... Okay. <laughs> My fighters aren't even going to be that much use. And the uh, submarines as well. Oh, and also it's still a standard game. At least, potentially, there are some islands I can use in this one, but this is a less good map overall. I mean, there are worse maps for me, but this is not necessarily a fantastic one. At least I'm on this side. I think these islands might be more usable than those islands would be, especially with these ballistics. So yeah, let's try and get in position there and then uh, see what gets spotted. All right, we've got some spots. Try and uh, help out the Akatsuki with this Grom, which is a reasonably competent gumbo. And unsurprisingly, yes, they have submarine here as well. Uh, but again, we're encountering the problem that we're trying to get hits at these ranges. Not that easy. I mean, Atlanta has the exact same issue at its longer ranges. Atlanta at shorter range is kind of terrifying. Atlanta at longer range is kind of easy to dodge if you're in a, uh, a destroyer with any reasonable degree of uh, maneuverability. Well, we could try and push up a little bit here. The Kansas is further back. I don't know. This might be a bit too risky. But, um, <laughs> I mean, you kind of have to take some risks in ships like this sometimes to uh, do really anything at all. Otherwise, you're just going to be sat behind an island the entire time doing nothing. And that's not useful for anyone. Right, you are way back there. I can't do much. It's not super long range. It's only, what, six, six kilometers? Yeah. That's the Megami. Kansas would be ideal. 
And that is the Grom that's now spotting me. And uh, quite usefully smoking. I might actually be able to put some torpedoes towards that smoke. If the Grom's in their smoke, I can actually just get round here and that's fine. To reload. It always feels a little wasteful using a reload for just one side, but if this isn't Benham, you can't be swinging around and um, doing fancy gyrations and just pewing torpedoes off in all directions. I'll try putting up a fighter, but I don't think I'll make much difference. I'll go for the New Orleans anyway. Yeah, so, so with the Pobeda, I mean, yeah, you have that issue of, like, any other kind of, of, uh, standards. Uh, oh, nice, CV, you are going to be, um, at least having a chance of shooting down the planes after they've made the drop, but of course the Pobeda, no. <laughs> they get to make the full drop and then they get to go away. So the fighter is sort of not very useful. But the Amagi is just kind of pulling out of range now, unfortunately. A random guess as to where there might be some... subs. Uh, oh, that New Orleans. Why are you doing that, New Orleans? That's that's not a good plan. Going face first into a Kansas is, is not a good plan. It's not like you have torpedoes. Uh, yeah, okay, well. Um, <laughs> I really don't want to push out into open water here. That would be a tremendously bad idea. Oh god, this is so risky, but we can try and torpedo the Kansas. But it is very, very risky. I might just get, like, fully obliterated, and there's not a lot I can do about it. Oh, okay, that was... Quite lucky, we do at least have a nice, uh, I don't know if this drop would even have a chance of intercepting, but anyway, let's get back into cover. I don't know who else is targeting me right now, but I don't like it. Right, chew on the Vinito, please. There's Megami there. That's not torps missed. They help pretty fast for cruiser torps. But at 12 kilometers, it does, you know, and the, the fact that they do spread out so much, it does give people a fair old chance to, to dodge out of the way. Let's see if we can't do something against this Megami. There's targets like this where IFHE I think would be probably a bit more useful. Right, we're gonna have to <laughs> we're gonna have to I think we'll just oh, fast forward and run aground and then back up rather than I'll do some tactical beaching. Not a lot of damage. Plenty of shatters. Non-pens, so yeah, IFHG would definitely be useful for that kind of scenario. Right, are you just loitering and trying to spot? What are you doing? I've also noticed the state of our team. <laughs> 
Uh, I don't think this is going to be lasting terribly much longer, to be honest, at this point. We'll try a random drop. I could try and get behind an island, one of these islands. Um, yeah, we're basically fully collapsing, so... Uh, I mean... Ships like this, like the Atlanta, um, anything short-range, there's plenty of short-range cruisers in the game. Um, like some of the British, the light cruisers for example, um, you're going to be struggling to make an impact in scenarios like this. Like there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So here's where if I had to land a stealth it would be a lot more useful, but... Because uh, I don't, I'm having to be a bit more cautious about things. Can I hit the Kansas from no. Don't think so. Will they even clear the No they will just about, but he's going the wrong way. A little bit further forward and we can possibly get him. Yeah, the fact that this is a standard game as well, um it feels like, I don't have empirical data for this, but it feels like these collapses are more likely to happen in a standard game. But that might be complete nonsense. Oh, and now I have nothing spotted for me, so, um, okay then. Yes, yes, hello Pobeda, you know I'm still here somewhere. So of course, also, yeah, there is the issue that, uh, when you have a CV in play, they might just decide to spot you, and there's not a lot you can do about it. You at least have good AA range. The AA range is sort of 5.8, so, you know, it could be better, but it could be worse. Oh dear. Everybody's dying! Please stop doing that. We've killed two ships. This was an absolute drubbing. Am I going to take two of these? Yes. Oh well. Yeah, not a lot I can do here. Uh, try putting some torps out there. Again, it's coming down to dodging, but it's a far less interesting scenario. To be honest, shall we just... Uh, see if we can torpedo a thing before I die. Like, what else am I going to do? Oh, hello, submarine. I might kill the submarine. Yeah, just instantly nuked by the Kansas. What can you do? Um, this was... This was a bad scenario for this cruiser. Bad scenario for any cruiser <laughs> when your team collapses that dramatically. But it happens. Right, well, not a lot of damage that time, but we didn't really have a chance to do a lot of damage. That was quite the ruffle stomp, all things considered. Now I could do another random one, but given that this is a tier 7 cruiser, I think there might be interest in how it does in operations. So let's give that a go. So we have Narai, which is absolutely ideal. And uh, well, let me use both guns and torpedoes and hopefully not get completely blatted. And also the range is a lot less of a problem as well. You get something like Cherry Blossom or Hermes. Um, yeah, you can end up just getting... Uh, or even Raptor Rescue, you can end up getting just completely annihilated by a battleship and you have to get uncomfortably close to things because you don't have the range. So let's see how this goes. We are, of course, going to have the usual spawn here. There's really, like, no variation in this one, so... Uh, it's also one of the more predictable ones in terms of how it's going uh, going to go. But of course, there's always that variable of your teammates. Sometimes things go hilarious, hilariously off base just because your teammates decide to do utterly silly or unexpected things. Right, so we're going to hit that Nicholas. Uh, ideally, we would get to go for the transports, but we'll see what happens. We might want to 
stick with the main group and use our torpedoes on the Missouri. So I have had run-throughs of Naraya B like that, where everyone just splits off to the sides. Leaves the transports completely undefended, apart from like maybe one ship, and the one ship is usually me. <laughs> And then you, you know, best case scenario, you like maybe lose one or two. Um, but maybe one of them is the lead transport. Because the Missouri can and will just ram stuff as well as shooting at it. The fact that we've got a pair of destroyers is a bit of a wild card. Destroyers can be okay. But um, I think they're a bit less useful unless they're very pew pew destroyers in this mode. Generally speaking, I mean, destroyers and ops are a bit of a gamble anyway. They can be made to work, some of them. But generally speaking, you either need really good firepower or a quick reloading set of torpedoes. And even then, a quick reloading set of torpedoes, they might be quite weak torpedoes, like the European ones, so... Uh, yeah, it can be a bit dicey. Well, that goes Leander... There goes the Farragut. It's a nice little... Magazine explosion. Oh, that's the um, uh, yeah. They're doing a. They've got a test camo at the moment, and if you kill something whilst you're using the test camo, it uh, has a, a different effect, which is quite nice. Right. Yeah. It looks like it might be me going for the transports, and that's absolutely fine. That's something the ship is definitely suited for. Uh, Wilco, I will go for those. Yeah, I've had, I've had rounds where you have, like, you've only got two battleships and both battleships decide they want to go for the transports and it kind of screws everybody else. Um, but fortunately this group seems to understand how this operation plays. So that's good. Sometimes you get people who are just, they selfishly want to do damage regardless of the fact that they're in a completely useless ship for it. And so you get the transport sailing into harbour with like, you know, two cruisers and a destroyer for protection. And once all the battleships spawn, things get nasty real quick. Of course, you can still win the scenario by killing all the enemy ships and not landing any troopers at all, but you do lose stars for that. Right, Farragut, let's you and me have a little thingy. Have a little argument. Oh, we actually landed a torpedo there. Nice. We're already racking up some okay damage. But Narai is a very target-rich operation. So that's maybe not too surprising. Should probably also get my Hydro going as this Farragut closes the distance. I think I've got the torps out the St. Clair, so I think I can then switch to shooting the the fort. Sometimes you get nice battleship players who will focus the fort for you, but uh, in this case, no. Oh, we do also have the Grom coming this way, maybe, or are they, uh, are they just parking up there to shoot at the, uh, get the torpedoes at the Missouri? I think they are, yes. Okay. One of the very nice things about this operation is that, of course, you've got the, uh, the lead ship giving healing, so... Very, very useful thing indeed. I know my rate of fire is all... yeah. Right, Atlanta would have 
done this already, but we're getting there. Atlanta is just still one of the best cruisers um, along. I mean, Mainz is just fantastic anyway, so Mainz is also an extremely competent. Still regarded as one of the best cruisers for doing ops. There we go. Someone being a bit cheeky and trying to take some of that damage, but that's okay. I've gotten that fox in the hen house medal or whatever it is multiple times over at this point, so oh my god, this again. Right, I think somebody is uh, keeping tabs on having to go for the. Yoink! My kill! <laughs> but hey, you know, you guys should be uh, heading into the... the thing anyway, so... Ah, oh, is it Yumari's secondaries that got it? <laughs> I was thinking I might get that kill, but never mind. Okay, so now we have Cleveland and a destroyer to deal with. Synops going for CV, so that's fine. So yeah, this is not as good as the Atlanta, but you do have the much more powerful um, torpedoes going for you with a much better range and the torp booster. So there is that extra source of damage there. I mean, Atlantis only got, is it four kilometers? 5.5? I honestly can't remember. Cleveland's already been taken care of, so let's focus on the wakeful. Hydro at this point would be nice. It's not exactly a necessity. I think you're going to do okay in most scenarios with this if you don't have an Atlanta, but uh, if you do have an Atlanta, I don't know if there's much reason to take this instead of the Atlanta, unless you really want those more powerful torpedoes. Uh, that might be a reason. There are some operations where actually having the longer range punchy torpedoes would um, be extremely useful. I mean, in this one, for instance. We can uh, do some preemptive drops. Whereas with the Atlanta, it's kind of hard when it's such a short range. You have to be uncomfortably close in an Atlanta. Whereas this, you know, stealth torpedoing uh, is uh, not to be underestimated. But if you want to stealth torpedo, the regular second Japanese uh, torpedo focused cruiser line. Might be slightly better. Unfortunately, we lost the Synop, so that Omaha is going to have to be dealt with. Of course, we do have a very quick turret response, so that's not going to be a problem. It's just a minor annoyance in the scheme of things. Actually, give that Synop a compliment for going and deal with the uh, CV. Grom, uh, I think the Grom's not going to last too much longer. They have smoke, but it's one of the problems with Pops is uh, they, they will focus you if you're in a destroyer fairly hard and you don't really have the health pool to sustain that focus, especially. Can I get Torps out on the brick line? Yeah, yes. Focusing the things with torpedoes, because generally that's the better idea. Uh, I might have to angle a bit though, if somebody with big guns decides to shoot at me right now, that would be awkward. The turret arrangement, I mean it's a very Japanese looking turret arrangement, so it's 
Yeah, you have to be fairly broadside to uh, use all your guns. Right, there you are, sneaky little Omaha. Unless he actually comes round. I, th I think that Omaha usually just follows a path round, so... Um, there's not much point going chasing after them. So the time is dead by this point. So the Umex is about to go. <laughs> All the coins exploding into the water. Away. So yeah, it's just a target gallery at this point. Uh, we've missed the 2000 mark. We might get the 1400 optional, but possibly not. Um, it's like the Yumahari was placed a bit more aggressively. They might be able to no. <laughs> uh, stop those transports getting targeted quite so heavily, but never mind. Four out of five is still quite decent. And also, really decently north of 200k, but the torpedo hits definitely um, have helped a bunch there. That's why I use the reload booster. So we can get some more fires going. Probably with uh, an Atlanta, or even the, the Boise. Which of course has 6 inch guns, but a similar play profile in that it has very, very short ranged guns. It's like 13 or 14 kilometers for that as well. Um, yeah, uh, they, they would be doing equally as well, if not maybe even a little bit better. But you know, it's competent, it's good enough. And if you want a variation on the Atlanta, this certainly serves as uh certainly serves as that. That anchorage is getting a bit close. Uh, ooh. Don't you be firing at me, Colorado. This is a little uncomfortably broadside, but we are in the healing area, so it's fine. Though, I still might just get, like, totally nuked. <laughs> There's the possibility! But we are at the end of the scenario now, so we might as well try and... Yeah, that's fine, it's fine. Overpend. Might as well try and get in. There's the torpedoes on my other side as well. Just for that bit of extra damage. So yeah, that looks like that'll be one. The Colorado's AI is getting a little distracted, which works just fine for me. Um, that wreck being in the way is kind of annoying, though. Basically, just gonna have to sail up to him point blank. Uh, actually, we could even just ram. We could just ram. Let's not involve with the torpedoes. Let's just ram. Boop! There we go. And there's that cheeky Omaha actually came around and torpedoed somebody from the other side. <laughs> anyway. 4 out of 5, like I said, not bad, nearly 300k. A uh, decent amount of credits. Yeah. It absolutely is going to be a competent enough ship in um, most scenarios. Obviously, Narai is just about the best one that you could uh, hope for, but uh, yeah. It was not bad. So that is it for my look at... Tokachi, uh, it's it's okay. 
not super exciting, but it's definitely okay. It's definitely playable if you like that shorter range, more high stakes play style. And uh, you do manage to get one of these as a freebie from a crate somehow. It might be worth taking a look at. Um, but uh, as far as you buying it well, I think that very much comes down to if you don't like that Atlanta playstyle, then it's probably worth giving a pass. Anyway, hopefully you have found this video useful and interesting, and if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath it. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more.